Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Hey folks! Today we're taking a look at a game that was announced five years ago many moons ago <laughs> and that's roll for the galaxy now this game is a dice version of race for the galaxy which came out many uh, more moons ago. it was it was certainly a bit ago when race for the galaxy came out i i want to say it was less than 10 it was less than 10 but it's not been that much less than 10 seven or eight yeah because we were in korea when it came out yep. for sure Race for the Galaxy is a game where you played cards that let you go through different phases, and when you go went through those phases, um, you would get points by building like an empire of planets and technologies in front of you. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing, except instead of cards, there's tiles, and instead of other cards, there's dice. dice. Now, dice should make a game good, right? Should. We'll see. Possibly. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get a plastic cup in their color, and they're also going to get a bunch of things. They're going to have a board here, which keeps track of, this is called their population. It keeps track of your money here. You start with one money, and then players are going to get a random home planet out of nine different home planets, and they're also going to get a random double tile here, which could be planets or technologies. Planets. Uh, have circles, technologies have diamonds. So let's say I get this one. This is what I start with. These are my, my three, my tableau here in front of me. Then each player gets to put some dice in their cup. They get to put three white dice in their cup and they're going to put two white dice in their population depending on what you get in your starting planets. For example, this planet here, which is an ancient race, says I get, I put, I get a green world a cube on this world. So there's a green cube there. And then this one here says I put a purple die in my cup at the beginning of the game. And this one says put a red die in my citizenry at the beginning of the game. So I get a purple cube in my cup and a red die here. So everyone's gonna have a somewhat different of a setup depending on these, on these uh, things that they have out there. Worlds always give you an immediate benefit, some sort of cube. And technologies will give you a special ability as the game goes on. Now at the beginning of the game, players have a shield and behind that shield is a tile. The shield tells you a lot of how to play the game. And in each round, you're going to roll your dice behind the shield, and you're going to look at what you've rolled. So here I've rolled a ship. I put that here underneath ship. And I've rolled three explorers. So I put them underneath the proper uh, dials. Now white dice have one of each on these. Uh, some dice, like the military dice, have more of the uh, settles and develop and the purple die has a lot of ships on it. Some dice have asterisks on them. Those dice can be put underneath any of the columns. Now after you put these here behind your shield, you're going to pick which phase you would like to activate that turn. You take one of your dice and you can put it on any phase. It doesn't matter what the dice says. So maybe I say, I'm going to activate, um, settle this turn. That's what I want to do. Then, you also have the opportunity to use any special abilities you have. Everyone has Dictate, which lets you take a die and put it on Dictate. Basically, it's going to go back in your cup for next round. And you can take one die and put it underneath a different thing. So maybe I want to put that one under Settle also. Once everyone is done messing with their dice or using whatever special abilities to maneuver their dice, then the shields are revealed. And in the middle of the table are a bunch of tiles that show you the different phases of the game. I picked phase three, so we turn it over and everyone's going to activate phase three. If somebody else, let's say this is somebody else's column here, had put one underneath settle, they get to use it. But if no one had activated phase three, they would not get to use it. Some other people may have activated a different tile. So we turn over the different phases that are active this round. If you're playing with two players, you'll also roll a die and whenever you roll, that phase is active. Players then will play through the active phases until the end of the round. Now, what do the phases do? 
In the explore phase, each die that you put here in the explore phase, that includes the die that you put here to activate the phase, and any dice underneath, each die can either increase your money by two, so you can add two to your money, or you can draw more tiles from the bag. Now at the beginning of the game, everyone's going to start with two tiles. You draw two tiles from the bag, and you're going to get these tiles. Each tile is double-sided. There's a technology on one side, and there's a plan on the other side. At the beginning, so you pick, I would say, okay, I'm going to pick this as my world, and this is my tech. But, when you explore, for each die you put in there, you are allowed to discard any tiles you want. So I don't, let's say I don't want this, this one. So I get rid of that tile, and then I draw two tiles from the bag. And then I look at these tiles and say, ooh, those are good worlds. Oh, those are good techs too. Uh, all right, I'm going to keep this one as a tech, and I'm going to keep this one as a world. But I put the world underneath, on the bottom of the pile here. Develop and uh, explore are basically the same thing. Any dice that you use for those are simply placed on top. So let's say I put two dice on development. I put those two dice here. This one needs six to build it. If I had some dice for explore, I would put those dice here on top of this world. Once I have enough dice to do the world or the development, they are built and they're going to be added to my tableau to the tiles that I already have out there. Again, when you build a world, it will do something for you. So this one here says gain a brown good on this world when you develop it. So I put a good on top of that world. If, it, sometime, if it's a technology, it will usually give me some sort of special ability, while the six technologies give you an ability and also extra ways to score points at the end of the game. The next phase is the produce phase. When you use produce dice, you can place production dice on any colored world that's not gray. So these gray things will never produce. This green one would produce, but it already has a die on it. This, this brown one has a die on it, but these two yellow ones don't. So let's say I produced, I put a blue die on this world, that's what I used, and on the other world I put a yellow die. Those are the two dice. I don't have to match the colors, although it's not a bad idea to match colors. Because the next phase is the ship phase. When you ship dice, each die that you use to ship dice with the, uh, the rocket ship symbol, you pick one of the dice and you're going to ship it off. You can ship it either for money, which it de depends on what color it is. Blue is green, brown is four, green is five, and yellow is six. Or you can ship them for points. When shipping it for points, you are going to look at the color. So let's say I'm shipping this one here for points. I get one point for shipping a good. If the die I'm shipping matches the color of the planet, I get an extra point. And if the die that I'm using to ship it matches the color, I get a third point. So you can get three points total. Here I get two points because purple is a wild and matches every planet. If I'd use purple to ship this one down here, I would get one, two, three points for shipping it. Now, anytime you use any sort of dice for shipping or producing or when you're done building something, all those dice get put into your citizenry because you basically use them. At the end of a turn, you can spend as much money as you want to take that many dice, one per dollar, and put them back into your cup. And then you can go back up to one dollar if you're at zero. You never go to zero. If you hit zero, you go back up to one. So you always have one dollar for the next turn. And then the next turn you have more dice. And you're going to continue doing this until one player has either built 12, in, 12 things in front of them. So you start with three, so nine more. Or there's a pile of points in the middle of the table. These are the points that you take when you ship planets. You start with 12 points per player. If all the points are taken, the game also ends. You then add any points you've gotten to each of these is worth the number on it. And maybe and remember the six developments have bonuses. Like for example, this one here gives me two points for every brown rare elements world that I have in my zone. You add up all those points and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Now it's very possible that many of you have never heard of Race for the Galaxy or played it because it's been out for quite a while. So the question here is, is Roll for the Galaxy an interesting game? Um, one of the, someone mentioned to me this, is the box is so big, but this is really chock full of a lot of dice, pretty yes. good quality dice, a lot of tiles. I thought the dice cups were pretty good quality. They were very high quality. You get a, a good chunk of stuff in here. Yes. So there are many good things in this game. I love the variable setup. You have one of nine planets plus one of nine starting things, and that gives you 81 configurations different well. configurations to start with. Right. And then after that, it is totally up to you. You yes. really can go various ways. You can just start shipping stuff. 
and get a lot of points that way. You can forget shipping and just build a whole pile of mm -hmm. uh, planets and techs, or you can do a mixture of those. Mm -hmm. And depending on what you pull from the bag, might say, well, this one might give you points for every alien planet. So now you're starting to look for alien planets. Right. When you use dice, sometimes you, you'll spend a die to put it to re-roll another die. Which die will you spend? I might say, huh, I'm going to throw this red die back at the cup. Because I'm pretty, I want to use that next turn. Yeah. And it's interesting as all these different colored dice have different sides. So you'll have to spend some time figuring out which dice do what. But as the game goes by, I felt like it was kind of a little bit natural. Yeah. As to which dice did what. Yeah. This is not a simple game for new people. They're, understanding how the dice are allocated will take a yeah, bit. Okay. Right. For new gamers. Yeah. And all the different technologies and how they work. That, that takes a bit to understand how the phases work. But I have taught this to new people, and they did get it. Yeah. And it was pretty, once we got going, they understood it. The, um, I'm, I'm just going to throw this title out there. This is, um, this is a gateway for Race for the Galaxy. This is the gateway version of Race for the Galaxy. Race for the Galaxy was very um, heavy on the uh, iconography and the symbology that was, that was used in the game. And you had to almost memorize what all those different things did before you could even... Uh, get any good at the game. Uh, this one is not that heavy. There's a lot of, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of iconography on there, but those tiles have uh, not just the icons there, they have a description. This is what this, this planet does. This is what this technology does. And so you don't have to rely upon the, the symbols or the icons to understand what your, what your planets or your technologies are doing. And that is what I think makes this, in my opinion, much better than Race for the Galaxy. Now, I didn't dislike Race for the Galaxy, but I wasn't all, you know, cuckoo nuts over it either. Um, uh, so I, I like this much, much better than Race for the Galaxy. Race for the Galaxy is in my top 30 games or so. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy that game. I've thought about this long and hard and played it several times, and I'm this is a Race for the Galaxy killer. Ooh. It really is. I, now, don't get me... I mean... I understand there's a lot of cool strategic things you can do in race, Something and the games and the games do feel different enough. This they have a very similar feel to them, but at the same time they're different. This has dice and there's different things going on. But there's a lot of reasons I like this better. To me, it's very straightforward. Sam already mentioned how the things are printed on the on the tiles, yeah. but it's also straightforward that you produce goods and then ship them. Yep. As opposed to Race for the Galaxy, where you produce them and then maybe next turn you can ship it. Maybe. And the dice that you shipped and things would go back in your cup and then they become things that activate other phases. Mm -hmm. And while I will never play Race for the Galaxy with five players because it's too long and boring, <laughs> this works okay with five. I was really surprised by that. Yeah. And almost every phase, every, people could play simultaneously. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of dice. You can get all sorts. And it's not a very long game. Yeah. One of the things that we thought would happen more often that didn't happen, it only happened once in the game that I played, uh, where... Uh, they would say, well, well, doesn't all of the phases activate then if you're playing with five players? And, and actually, it only happened once in the game. In the uh, five-player game, in, right. In a five-player game. So people, again, it's that blind, it's the, it's the blind assignment, uh, the secret assignment of your dice and where you're going to put them. That, that really throws things for a loop. At the same time, though, I think that's probably one of the more difficult parts of the game to understand. Uh, is how to assign, how to allocate your dice, uh, and how it all works out. That's the thing that I had the most trouble wrapping my head around. Once I understood it, it was like, you know, duh, should have had a V8 type thing. But uh, it, 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 it's, it, it's a... Another question, I'm being a little sporadic here, another question that I've heard a lot of people ask about different games is, can I own both? Can I own both? You said that this kills race. Well, okay, I gotta be careful. It's not like I suddenly don't like Race for the Galaxy. Right. But I, I can see you owning both because Race for the Galaxy has cards and I think it could be played slightly faster than this one because here you're rolling dice in the card game, yeah. you're just going shh, shh, shh. Mm -hmm. And Race for the Galaxy does have four expansions for it yeah. that are mostly not that great, but they do add more cards to it. Yeah. Uh, it has more variety in it, maybe. Mm -hmm. But man, I don't know. I was gonna say uh, with this one, you were mentioning putting the dice behind the shields. I've heard some people complain that, oh, well, you can change your dice to whatever you want behind the shields. No, oh, come on. My recommendation is don't play with those folks then. Exactly. 
if you don't trust them that, that they're gonna move their dice around, then once you catch them, be gone with him. Beat that! Oh no, no, don't do that. Um, the uh, I think you could definitely own this and race for the galaxy and and be and be completely okay. I think they are. Um, they have. Well, temporarily, I am going to own both of them. Right, and uh, I think much like you could own, say, King of New York and King of Tokyo. Uh, you can own both of those, and it's basically the same game, same game, but one is definitely played a little bit differently than the other. Same thing is true here. You have the basic concepts that are the same. Uh, the game theme is definitely the same, uh, but how you play the game is different. And I think this is a little bit more user-friendly than Race for the Galaxy is. So I think this might hit the table more than Race for the Galaxy does with newer players. In case I haven't been clear, I love it. I yeah. really like it. I like how the dice feel different. The purple die is that cool wild die. The red mm -hmm. one lets you build stuff. The yellow one is a die that you can get a lot of money from. I love how when I'm reaching in the bag looking for tiles, I know every tile has a planet or technology on it. Yeah. I, if I need a planet, for example, yep. I know I'm going to get one. Double-sided tiles are genius. That's yeah, It works so genius. well because you're like, oh, I don't like this side, but I do like this side. <laughs> and it just and, yeah. and being able to like... You stack them in a queue mm -hmm. and build more than one per turn. Yep. Yeah. I'm giving this one two huge stacks of space dice up. <laughs> it is... I, I, it's the best game... Well, okay, it's the, the second week of February. I mean, of, of January. <laughs> <laughs> best game of the year, but really is... I'm putting it in my collection. I like it that much. That's good. Uh, I'm going to give this two dice cups up because uh, this is a game that I can definitely see... Uh, me buying. Now, I got rid of Race for the Galaxy. That's how much I didn't play that. Uh, it's not that I didn't dis that's not that I didn't like it. It's just that I didn't play it very often, so I got rid of it. Uh, this is one that I know my, my family will play. Uh, my wife will play it. My, my kids will play it. Uh, I can get other people to play it that are not necessarily gamers because of the dice. The dice rolling is such ah, a, dice. Is such a uh, recognized mechanic that people will latch on to it and, and then they can start digesting some of the iconography that's going on. So uh, definitely two dice cups up for me. And uh, uh, going back to the double-sided, that's, that's four choices off of two, two cards. You know, that's just, I, I, it's, it seems simple, but it's genius. It really is. Uh, that really makes the game cool for me as well. So, two dice cups up. Alrighty. Oh, yeah, and also I love how the dice system is. How the dice move to the citizenry, to the cup. Yeah. You gotta figure out where they're going. Great. Anyhow, roll for the galaxy. Woo! Good job. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>